Especially for you all in the viewing room where I sat for some of the sessions, I need like a big round of applause. <laughs> you did it! You did it! I, I, I was in the viewing room and sometimes like people like did a little slow clap. And now how does it feel to be part of the group like clapping it out? Yes! Yes, especially for this unicorn dress that I have on. They said comedy unicorn, and so I was like, this is appropriate. Um, after this, I'm attending a quinceanera. So, <laughs> saying. Um, it's interesting because me and Julian had just a little bit of a miscommunication. Um, I thought I was presenting another talk at TEDx today, and uh, Julian was like, no, we want you to improvise and recap the day. And I was like, okay, Miss Fizzle. <laughs> For those of you with blank stares, that is the lead star of the Magic School Bus. Interesting childhood show of mine where a young lady took kids on a school bus on a journey to places they never been before. And Julian is a modern day Miss Fizzle. Because <laughs> here I am on a journey I've never done before. Um, it's interesting because Russell started the day talking about how stories are part of spreading ideas. And you heard from Sunny about her near miss in an autonomous vehicle. Girl, I would just like let it go. <laughs> You're on 85 or 400 or wherever you are in Atlanta. Just gonna let it happen. <laughs> Paulette talked about experiences in, in, the, in her schools with her students. And that's the beautiful thing about today is you saw about 16 different speakers and they were of all different upbringing, race, demographics. But what a common thread that was there was stories. And there's so much power in stories. I mean, I'm a storytelling comedian. And let me tell you guys, I got some stories from today. <laughs> I think where I have the bulk of a great set was the lunch of TEDx Greenville. <laughs> I mean, it was like Hunger Games. May the odds be ever in your favor. And in this case, it was chicken. <laughs> and it was so good that Jeffrey Crispo talked right before we had lunch. Because in my mind, in a former life where I'm hangry and I don't like intermittent fasting, <laughs> all the toxins built up in my body. <laughs> And normally, I would be filled with animosity, like, man, should have picked chicken. <laughs> and then there was some cruelty. I bet it's dry. <laughs> and then there would have been some jealousy of, man, at least the vegetarians got something. <laughs> And finally, there would have been self-righteousness. I'm doing it for the beef! <laughs> but instead, I was filled with all the positivity that I could make. I was friendly with people as we commiserated of not getting that wholesome beef in our body right away. I was cheerfulness because there was a fine man painting up a storm in that lobby. <laughs> uh, did you see him? Did you see him? And there was no judgment there, especially not with this staff. I mean, all of them are volunteering their time. <laughs> Give a big round of applause for the staff. <laughs> so I want to indulge you guys today um, with a couple of stories that I did plan to do for my talk. I'm going to weave a little bit of what I heard today. And then we're going to end this thing on a really strong note. So just to get us started, um, I, I believe 
like stories created the person that I am. And one of my fondest stories that I can remember was when I was five years old and my mom came to pick me up from school. And I was so upset. And she was like, what is wrong with you? What happened? And I was like, everyone made a marshmallow structure and I didn't get to make a marshmallow structure. And my mom was like, why you don't make a marshmallow structure? I was like, I had to go to my special class. And so she grabbed me by my hand and she dragged me up to Mrs. K, my kindergarten teacher. And she's like, what is a special class? Where's the marshmallow structure? <laughs> really devaluating an educator. <laughs> Thank you, Edward. Thank you. And Mrs. K looked at her awestruck and she was like, Oh, well, Shivani is such a quiet child. We thought she didn't speak English. We've been putting her in English as a second language. At this moment, my mother heard no marshmallow structure. We don't think she speaks English. And she channeled something that she always does. She just repeats phrases until she drives down what she wants to get done. And she was like, listen, Mrs. K, I have something to say. Marshmallow structure, we make it today. <laughs> and then she was like, she speak English, she speak English, she speak English. She speak English, she speak English, she speak English. Man, Jarrell, she like really captured that purpose instead of fame. Cause that was like Cardi B, 1990, man. Oh, good. She could have gone places with that, man. And you better believe we made a marshmallow structure that day. And so when we got home, I started shoving my face full of confection like I did that cake and ice cream because beef was not happening again. <laughs> and I loved it so much. And my mother, she like grabbed me by the face and she said, listen here, people are going to make assumptions about you and you better find your voice. And I'm not always going to be there to speak up for you. People thought things about me that I could not study, that I could not work. Look at me. And so this is what I leave you with. It's pretty powerful stuff. She's kind of an OG. Yeah? She is that type of person. You know, uh, she loved a great deal. Loved a great deal. Um, one of our favorite things to do was go to the Sri Lankan fish market. And my mom would take pleasure battling with the owner on price. And what she would do is she'd be like, how much for cut fish? And he would give a price. She goes, how much for a whole fish you don't cut it? And he would give a price. How much for the fish without the head? And he would give a price. How much for just the head? And in my mind, I'm like, are we even eating fish now? <laughs> She was all about a deal, all about a deal. And she would take that fish home and she'd have so much pride that she bargained out of it. You know where that doesn't work out? Ashley Home Furniture. <laughs> She's like, how much would just the headboard? <laughs> or the mirror from the dresser. I don't want the whole dresser. I don't like the dresser. And she's like, ma'am, this is a suite. And my mom would be like, it would be sweet if you gave me the, just a the headboard. She did not go home with that headboard. Uh, another time, you know, it's interesting. My, my parents had iPhones and they wanted to upgrade their iPhones. And I think it's so funny. Anne-Marie was talking about the digital landscape of things. So I went home one day and I was like, why are you trying to upgrade your iPhones? My dad's like, you know what? I'm trying to sell some things on the, you know, the things. And there's a guy named Craig. <laughs> he has some list, he will sell it for me. And I was like, mm, got some of the things right there. 
not quite all of them. And just before the sentence ends, my mom was like, yeah, don't forget to ask Shivani for that uh, taxi driver, Mr. Uber. <laughs> I was like, oh man. So I actually went with them to the Apple store to upgrade their iPhones. And uh, we walk in, you know, my dad's all prepared. He's got all his files. He's like, two iPhones right now, please. <laughs> and it's like a young college student working there. And he goes and gets them ever so slowly. And then my mother sashays up to him. And she's like, last time when we got the iPhones, you gave me a candle. It's like a promotion, like a free candle. <laughs> Where's my candle? The guy's like, I don't, I don't, I don't have a, a candle for you. He's like, come on, I'm buying two iPhones. They're very expensive. You better give me something for this. And I was like, Mom, what do you do? And like, I was doing that side eye that Courtney was talking about. Like, mm, no, she didn't. <laughs> Ask for something for free again. She's like, shh. You have to ask for things if you want things to happen. And so the guy was like, I mean. I can give you like a free, mean air guitar. <laughs> and my mom looks at him and she's like, yeah, yeah, give me that. <laughs> and so I look at her and I'm like, do you even know what that is? And she's like, he said it's free. <laughs> so he does one of these moves, not like Keith. Keith was much more strategic with that guitar move. And my mom looked him stone in the face and was like, I don't want that. <laughs> She's bold. She's bold. Uh, when I turned 21, I uh, wanted to get my American citizenship. Like Pooja, I was about to get in the workforce. I only had a green card. And so I wanted to study for the test. I'd been here long enough in the country. And, and get it. And my mom was like, I want this too. I want to be an American citizen. And I was like, there's a lot of studying. You got to pass a test. She's like, OK, quiz me. <laughs> I was like, who's the first president of the United States? Easy. George Clinton Bush. <laughs> I was like, we got a lot of studying to do. <laughs> And she studied, she studied so hard. She like got all these books together. She was reading. And then like one day she came home, or I came home and she was like, hey, do you know Martin? And I was like, the show, Shanene, yes, dating myself. <laughs> and she was like, no, 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 I don't know this bloody show. Martin, he was a man who marched and had a dream. He's a great black man. You don't know Martin? And I was like, Ma, you can't be on a first name basis with Martin Luther King, okay? <laughs> That's like Douglas calling one of those historians, Femi. <laughs> and it was great. She, she took the test, she passed with flying colors. And the immigration officer like, thank you, thank you. The immigration officer was like, yeah, you know, we've got some formalities here, just a couple questions. He was like, so in the event the United States enters war, are you willing to bear arms for this country? And my mom was like, I mean, I don't really like to wear sleeveless shirts <laughs> because I have like the fat arm. You know the fat arm? I don't like to show the fat arm. Fat arm. <laughs> And then she came and talked to me. She's like, I didn't know like a bare arms and like a hold a weapon. I thought I you have to wear sleeveless. <laughs> and in my mind, I was like, I love that you are willing to hold a rifle, but a tube top's where you draw the line. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, I lost my mom six months ago to cancer. And through that whole process, I have captured these stories of her and stories about all kinds of people in my past. And I really think these stories and these lessons and these things that I've learned have shaped me to be the person that I am. 
I am in a very male-dominated hobby known as stand-up comedy, but I ended up opening for my comedy idol, Russell Peters, just by asking. I changed careers after a successful period of time in supply chain to HR management because I wasn't going to let people assume the capabilities of a good HR manager. I earned two degrees and I'm proud to say I am student loan debt free. <laughs> it might have been because of the Kenega Subbays my father's paternal side, the Natarajas on his side as well, the Kenagaratnams that are from my mom's side. It might have been from Parvati or Ratriam, or it could have been from my great-grandfather. These people all provided stories that shaped my parents, that shaped me. You heard so many stories today that you'll probably resonate. Now, don't go home too excited. I don't want all of you to use the word woke now. <laughs> but I want you to marinate on them. I want them to shape who you are. I want you to realize that you're the freedom fighters that can fight change, that it starts with you to make an impact in Greenville. I want these stories to influence and shape the person that you will be. My name is Shivani Nataraja. Thank you guys so much.